Mr. President, before I uh, talk about the matter at hand, I would like to remember Officer Chestnut and Officer Gibson. I did not have a chance to know Officer Gibson. I did have a chance to know J.J. And he was uh, somebody that lit up a room, had a thousand watt smile. And uh, I'll never forget one early morning coming, uh, I was going to a meeting in the House of Representatives. I wasn't familiar with where the room was and J.J. took me right to it. And uh, a delightful man. And it was tragic that his life was taken. I'll never forget the funeral. It was one of the most remarkable outpourings I've ever seen. And so we remember with enormous respect Officers Chestnut and Officer Gibson. Mr. President, uh, I come to the floor this morning. First of all, I've got to respond to the, the Republican leader. What a fountain of misinformation. What a fountain of misinformation. He, he repeats this canard that no budget action has been taken here for four years. Well, how, what about the Budget Control Act that was passed last year with more than 70 votes here in the United States Senate? That was passed instead of a budget resolution. It was a law. Anybody that's had even a little bit of civics knows that a law is stronger than a resolution. And indeed, that law cut spending by $900 billion over 10 years and put in place this sequester that we now face that cut another $1.2 trillion over 10 years for a total spending cut of over $2 trillion, the biggest spending cut in the history of the United States. And the Republican leader acts as though he never heard of it. It never happened. Now let's get real. We took action in the House and the Senate, and it was signed into law by the President. Mr. Pre Mr. President, the last time our friends on the other side were in charge, their policies brought us to the brink of financial collapse. Have we forgotten the economy was shrinking at a rate of 9% in the last quarter of the previous administration? And in their last month in office, we lost 800,000 jobs in one month? That was their record. This administration has turned things around. We're no longer losing jobs, we're gaining them. We're no longer shrinking in the economy, it's growing. Not as strong as we would like, but a remarkable turnaround after the other side and their policies led us to the brink of financial collapse. Now, Mr. President, let's talk about the legislation before us. It assures 98% of the American people they're not gonna have a tax increase extends expiring provisions on income taxes and income tax relief for everyone below $250,000 a year. It includes incentives to promote work and support families. And it provides relief from the individual alternative minimum tax for one year, a tax that is increasingly affecting the middle class. Now, our friends on the other side say, whoa, wait a minute, that means you're going to have on those over 250,000, a top rate of 39.6%. That's true. What happened the last time we had a top rate of 39.6%? That was during the Clinton administration. What was the economic record then? 39 straight quarters of economic growth from 1991 until 2000, the longest period of uninterrupted growth in this nation's history. 24 million jobs created. That's what happened the last time we had a top rate of 39.6%. Mr. President, why is it important that we begin doing something about these growing deficits and debt? Because we are on an unsustainable course. This is one place where the Republican leader and I would agree. We are on an unsustainable course. We have been since the previous administration. Have they forgotten? They tripled the debt during that administration. Tripled foreign holdings of U.S. debt. Doubled the debt. Mr. President, 
we are on an unsustainable course. We are headed for a debt 200 percent of our GDP if we don't act. And this is a spending and a revenue problem. This chart shows clearly spending over the last 60 years is the red line. The green line is revenue. As you can see, we are at or near a 60-year high in spending. We are at or near a 60-year low on revenue. It's true we've got a spending problem. It is also true we have a revenue problem revenue at or near a 60-year low. And our friends on the other side, well, let's just have the historic average for revenue. And the problem with that, Mr. President, is not a useful benchmark. This is spending going back to 1972. The red line, 40 years. The green line is the historic average for revenue. You can see, if we just had the historic average for revenue, we never would have balanced the budget in a single year over 40 years. But that's what the other side wants to do. Mr. President, the fact is the five times we've balanced the budget since 1969, in 42 years, the five times we balanced the budget, revenue was nearly 20% of GDP. 19.7% in 1969, 19.9% in 1998, 19.8% in 1999, 20.6% in 2000, 19.5% in 2001. Mr. President, facts are stubborn things. Former Republican Budget Committee Chairman Judd Gregg said this about revenue. We also know revenues are going to have to go up if you're going to maintain a stable economy and a productive economy. Because of the simple fact, you're going to have to have this huge generation that has to be paid for. It's the baby boom generation. And that's not a forecast. That's not a, proje a projection. They've been born. They're alive today. And they are going to be eligible for Medicare and Social Security. Mr. President, in 2010, we saw some wealthy people paying no federal income tax, none. People with incomes of $500,000 to $1 million in 2010, 14000 paid nothing, zero. Those earning over $1 million in 2010 that paid nothing were 4000 Is that fair? Is that fair? It's outrageous. 4,000 people earning over a million dollars paid absolutely nothing. 14,000 between $500,000 and a million dollars of income paid absolutely nothing. And our friends want to defend that system. Shocking. Mr. President, here's what's ta happening to so-called tax expenditures. We are now spending more money through the tax code than through all of the appropriated accounts. And who are the big winners? Well, the top 1% in income, on average, get a benefit of $255,000 a year by the so-called credits, deductions, exclusions, preferences that are shot through the tax code. Mr. President, we have a little five-story building in the Cayman Islands that claims to be home to 18,000 companies. They all say they're doing business out of that little five-story building. Are they doing business out of that little building? Or are they doing monkey business out of that building? 18,000 companies in a little five-story building in the Cayman Islands evading and avoiding the taxes due in the United States. Our friends on the other side say, no change. Shouldn't touch that. Really? That's fair? I don't think so. Mr. President, let's get real. Let's get serious. Let's take on deficits and debt. Let's make certain that everybody has a chance to contribute, even those who are at the top rungs who are now paying nothing. I thank the chair and yield the floor.